We're getting our kicks at the seat of government with Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham, and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Geiler. In the ministry's general assistance department, dedicated men sit for long hours on hard leather chairs, but are always ready to rise and shine. One compensation for Lennox Brown and Lamb is the variety of jobs they tackle. The government seem awfully keen on this Anglo-Chinese friendship, Mum. Well, China's a very important power, too, and becoming more so, you know. Do you know that in China, a baby is born every five seconds? Good Lord. Do they know the man responsible? <laughs> it's very important the Chinese should be warm and friendly to Britain. After all, no one else is. And they feel this exchange of goods will help? Absolutely. If the British public start eating with chopsticks, it'll open up new, new horizons. Well, chopsticks are terribly awkward for eating baked beans. <laughs> that is hard to pick up anything at all. Exactly. Exactly. The government see it as a marvellous way to cut food bills. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. And in return, we encourage the Chinese to savour the British way of life, introduce them to our cultural heritage. Is it? that why we sent them the footballs? Yes, that's right. Yes, and not just the footballs. The changing of the guard tea towels. And the haggises. Here's your elevenses. Put the tray on the desk, would you? Uh, have you typed those notes for the Chinese brochure? I've done a couple of pages, sir. Here you are. You can check them if you like. You're in a bad mood today, Mildred. I can tell by the way you've arranged the two chocolate fingers on this plate. <laughs> well, I can't worry about biscuits. I've got all that typing to do. Uh, yes, you've made some mistakes here, Mildred. Mistakes? I'm afraid so, yes. This should read, the Chinese provide bicycles for Peking tours. Not the Chinese provide bicycles for peeping toms. <laughs> well, it's close enough, isn't it? No, it is not close enough. I'm only human. I'm not a blooming machine. It's not like pressing a button on a commuter. Uh, something's upsetting you, Mildred. Why don't you tell us what it is? Make a clean uh, <clears throat> chest of it. Well, yeah, I'm a bit upset. Because of what my boyfriend's done. Oh, how awful. You should have slapped his face like they do on the television. I've got nothing to slap his face for, Mr. Lamb. He's gone off me. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, how has he changed? I'll tell you how he's changed. Most nights, we're sat on the sofa in the front room, right? With the telly up loud, because the springs are noisy. <laughs> <laughs> no need for too much detail, Mildred, thank you. These days, there's not much detail to give. He started watching the telly. No. Yeah, he just sits there waiting for the weather forecast. The weather forecast? Why? Because he's fallen in love with that woman from the Met Office. The one that does a forecast and sticks them little watsits on the map. I'm amazed. He's blooming infiltrated with her. He gets all, he gets all steamed up about her warm front and her high pressure areas. <laughs> he never looks at me, just stares at the telly like a Mormon. A moron, Mildred. Yeah, like one of them and all. Well, be that as it may, we all have our problems. I'm fed up and I don't care who knows it. And then there's all this work, non-stop, three hours a day. <laughs> Dear me. Mm. We have a problem here, too. The girl's upset. I can sense it. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Perhaps the permanent undersecretary could advise he's a man of the world. Sir Gregory. Oh, you'll get no help from him. He's about as sympathetic as a hard-boiled egg. Oh, good morning, Sir Gregory. I mean, good morning, Sir Gregory. You're a pair of no good, half witted, bone headed bunglers. Uh, have we done something we shouldn't have done? You have to dispatch goods to China, correct? Yes. A crate of haggis and a crate of footballs. Yes. Two items new to our Chinese friends. Yes. Sir Gregory, the goods were put on the plane last week. They were, Lennox Brown. With the label switched round. With the label switched round? With the result that members of the Chinese government sat down to a banquet of boiled footballs. <laughs> Very embarrassing, yes. Hard to know what wine to drink. <laughs> Meanwhile, 22 Chinese athletes took the field at the Palace of Heavenly Light and began playing football with haggises. Not a pretty sight. The haggises burst when kicked. 
and the whole place was plastered with oatmeal and offal. It has been renamed the Palace of Heavenly Lights. <laughs> well, I just can't understand it, sir. I mean, nothing like this has ever happened before. Well, the PM's had an angry letter from their trade minister, Young Sun Senior. Ah, yes, I've heard of him. Doesn't old Young Sun have a Young Sun, Young Young Sun? <laughs> oh, be quiet, lad. I'm afraid our secretary must have mislabeled the labels. She's a bit off colour at the moment, sir. Yes, she has a personal problem, sir, and it's rather affecting her work. Indeed. Well, then, that's a matter for the Ministry of Welfare Officer. Oh, the new welfare officer's arrived, then. Apparently. Not that he's likely to be much use. The board fluttered my advice and appointed a young man straight out of college. Oh. Uh, I heard you recommended Miss Bentwater, your friend from the typing pool. Oh, uh, you heard that, uh, did you? Well, it's no secret. I've taken an interest in the gal. Very bright. Executive material. Really? Yeah, I'm anxious she should find a better position. Really? However, the board saw fit to choose some long-haired, wet-behind-the-ears pseudo-intellectual. Well, I can't stay here bending words. I have to see Lord Stilton. Lord Stilton? My word, sir. You mustn't keep him waiting. Well, you'd better send apologies to young son senior. And remember, one more slip-up on these Chinese jobs, and I'll ling your necks. <laughs> Wanted to see me, Lord Stilton. Oh, come in, man, come in. Don't just stand there like a banana waiting to be peeled. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> now, two points, Pitkin. One, the new Ministry Welfare Officer starts work today. A new lad, straight from college. So I understand, sir. I must say, I was telling my star... He's he... my nephew, you know. Very bright. We were lucky to get him. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, indeed, sir. Yes, I was telling my star, sir, we need young men with college educations. Did you hear? Some flighty young trollop from the typing pool applied for the job. Uh, damn, she... Uh, well, you, you, you could say she's game, sir, yes. For anyone, so I hear. <laughs> uh, second point, Pekin. This Anglo-Chinese friendship month. Your people coping all right? Uh, yes, sir. They're doing... Remarkable things. It seems the London Zoo are now involved. Uh, the London Zoo, sir? The London Zoo, man. Animals and all that nonsense. Some crack brain scheme. I don't know the details. But the point is, they've been told Anglo-Chinese arrangements are centered on your department. Any problems, they'll liaise with your people. Oh, uh, very good, sir. Uh, chap in charge is the zoo supervisor, Mr. Claude Badley. So, uh, your people may be hearing from him. Uh, Claude Badley from the zoo, do you see, Pitkin? Yeah. Oh, uh, excuse me, I'm Fiona. Are you Mr. Badley? Oh, that's right, my dear. I'm Claude Badley, the zoo supervisor. And uh, you're the new assistant keeper? Yes, that's right, yes. Uh, well, sit down and take the weight off your wellies. Now, uh, you've been feeding the panda. How is she today? Well, she seems awfully miserable. I mean, she's just hanging around like a spare cake at a wedding. Yeah, poor old no-no. She's pining for a mate. That's her trouble. Oh, gosh, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, to be no male pandas about, see, but, um, oh, she'll be all right soon. The Chinese are loaning us their male panda from Peking Zoo. Oh, golly, how super. He's flying to London on Thursday. I didn't know pandas could fly. <laughs> I like you, girl. You've got your head screwed on him. The fact is, he's arriving by plane. Coco, his name is, and he'll soon sort out our little panda's problem. Oh, gosh, you mean she'll have Coco at bedtime? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the point is, the government's got wind of all this, see, and they want the panda's visit to be part of Anglo-Chinese Friendship Month. I say, that's jolly shrewd. So, we have to liaise with Whitehall. You'll be meeting Coco off the plane. Ring the ministry from the airport, check if they've any special instructions. Bang on, Mr. Badley. Matter of fact, I think I'll drop in at the ministry myself tomorrow morning. Make sure we got the protocol right. Oh, Milton, what have you done to these elevenses? Oh, look, you've forgotten to put any tea in the pot. It's just hot water. Well, fairly hot water. Do you have to pick on every little thing? Always nagging you are. Don't worry, Mildred. I like a nice cup of hot water in the morning. <laughs> Except you didn't actually put a cup on the tray. 
It's a blooming liberty. You can tell your eleven is in your face. I should go a bit carefully, too, while Milner is in this mood. You don't want your new bowler hat jumped on as well. <laughs> I suppose she's gone to lock herself in the girls' washroom again. Well, I took Sir Gregory's advice and passed this problem to the welfare officer. You've seen him, have you? What's he like? No, 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 no. I haven't seen him. I sent him a memo. I said Mildred was restless and irritable. And what could the welfare officer suggest? Not much, according to Sir Gregory. Ah, Sir Gregory seems to have changed his mind. He's now written to all departments saying the chap's a real expert. His ideas may be unconventional, more, but we must all cooperate. Well, let's hope he can give us some advice on Mildred. Yes, well, I suggested in my memo he might drop in and see us this morning. Oh, well. oh morning, gentlemen. Is this the General Assistance Department? Uh, this must be him. Yeah. Ah, you've come to talk about uh, cheering up this difficult female. Uh, well, yes, I suppose you could say so. Well, we are indeed the General Assistance Department, but we're always glad of a little assistance ourselves. <laughs> yes, uh, we uh, haven't been given your name. Uh, Badley's my name, oh. and I thought you'd like some details of what I'm proposing to do. It's a problem, isn't it? One never knows quite how to deal with a fractious female. Well, I find they usually respond to a prod in the rump with a sharp stick. <laughs> your pardon, Mr. Badger. Then again, you can often win them over with a handful of bamboo shoots. <laughs> Did you say bamboo shoots? Or a bucket of warm milk and plenty of clean straw to lie on, of course. Sir Gregory said his ideas might be unconventional. <laughs> but in this case, there's a straightforward answer. She needs a male partner, you see. We'd, um... Rather reach the same conclusion, Mr. Badley. Well, it's lack of male company that makes them restless and irritable. That's why I fixed her up with this stud. Yes, pardon? Fine, healthy male. Mm, that'll solve her problems. Are we to understand that you've uh, already arranged a male companion? Well, that's why I'm here, isn't it? To check you approve the arrangements. Well, uh, you're the expert, Mr. Badley. Uh, we've been told to cooperate. The courtship behavior is fascinating, you know. The young male will crawl towards her and lick her ears. Perhaps we shouldn't go into all that. No, no. Best wait for the time, eh? Then you can watch it happen. (laughs) I shall most certainly not be watching. Of course, if they go too far too quick, you can always douse them with a bucket of cold water. (laughs) Anyway... As soon as the mail arrives tomorrow, my assistant will phone you for instructions. What are you on about, Mr. Lamb? You brought eleven this for me? That's right. We thought it'd cheer you up. Here you are. Well, I'll go to the foot of our stairs. What's this? Bamboo shoots. (laughs) (laughs) We brought them specially at the hardware shop. You don't think I'm going to eat that much? Well, at least drink this warm milk. From a bucket? <laughs> Have you finally gone off your trolley? Now drink it up, Mildred, then you can have a nice lie down. We put clean straw in your office. <laughs> I get it. You're taking the mickey, aren't you? You're not content with nagging and bullying, you're having a bit of a mock. Well, I'm not putting up with it, so there. You can take your straw and your bucket of milk and you can... Oh, dear. Do you think we've done the wrong thing? And the bamboo shoots and all. I don't know. These newfangled ideas don't work, do they? Yeah, well, at least we tried to cooperate with the welfare officer. Still, for all his modern nonsense, he's, he's got to the root of Mildred's problem, you know. You mean the new young man? Or male partner, as she chooses to call him. Hmm, let's hope the young man and Mildred take to each other. Well, we must do all we can to help, too. When he gets here this afternoon, we can have a little celebration, couldn't yes. we? That's an idea, you know, a bottle of sherry and a cake, that sort of thing. Have a peek at the fellow. Yes. Hmm. Hello, Lennox Brown peeking. Uh, uh, speaking. Oh, uh, Mr. Badley's assistant here. He called to see you yesterday. Ah, yes, yes. We chatted about this uh, female problem. He was um, fixing up a male partner. That's right. I have him here. He's just arrived. And he's absolutely sweet. You will adore him. Uh, well, I'm sure I'd be pleased to meet him. <laughs> oh, you love his big brown eyes. And he keeps wrinkling his nose at me. It sounds a lively fellow. <laughs> well, you'll bring him to our office, will you? To your office? Did you say 
your office? Well, naturally. I mean, we'd like to vet him. Uh, well, where'd that defeat the whole object? What? <laughs> Odd girl. Seemed rather confused. Still, the young man's on his way here. Now, let's go and buy the sherry and the cake. Yes, and maybe the petty cash would run for a few cigars. I do. Yes, I just hope Mildred appreciates all our efforts. I gained the ministry, Mr. Archu, and the pound us to go to their office. Very kind. It's rather odd, I thought, but it seems it's some sort of veterinary procedure. Very kind. <laughs> Perhaps you wouldn't mind taking Coco there, Mr. R2. The crate should fit on top of a taxi. I have to get back to the zoo. Pity the sherry was so expensive. Do you think this grape relax tonic wine will be all right? Oh, I'm sure it will. The young man won't know the difference. I wonder what sort of chap they thought was suitable for Mildred. Oh, uh, good afternoon. Very kind, R2. Bless him. <laughs> uh, can we help you? Very kind. You head of British government? Well, not quite. <laughs> Very kind. Have delivered cocoa as required. We'll now withdraw and feed lions in Trafalgar Square. Also await further instructions. Very kind. You know, I'm not sure he's quite the right type for Mildred. <laughs> he seems a bit inscrutable. Oh, don't be daft, too. That wasn't a young man. He just said he came to deliver some cocoa. Oh. <laughs> Mildred must have ordered it from the grocers. Oh, I see. That seems an awfully large crate for cocoa. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Still, I suppose it's cheaper to buy in bulk, you see. <laughs> what did you say to her? I didn't say anything, Mum. What made that noise? Probably the canteen results. They never agree with me. <laughs> uh, quick. Good grief. There's something moving in that crate. Uh, one, it's moving out of it. Uh, oh, it's smashing the crate to pieces. Oh. I say, it's a giant panda. Well, I can see that, but why is it here? Did you order one? Well, I'm... <laughs> of course not, you idiot. No? Oh, he bit me. Shoot a piece off my trousers. He's eating it. Yes, well, let's hope he doesn't like it. If he does, he'll come back for more. <laughs> oh, dear, now he's got hold of the bottle. Yes, well, I'm glad we didn't get sherry. He seems quite content with that tonic wine. Yes, he's rubbing it under his armpits. <laughs> And look where he's stuck that cigar. He's lucky it wasn't lit. <laughs> but there's a note pinned to the remains of the crate. Well, what does it say? Other side up. <laughs> no, no, no. What else does it say? Uh, Chinese panda delivered as per instructions. Uh, no. Two. I think one of us may have slipped up. Sir Gregory will do us a mischief. He will. Once Sir Gregory spots that panda in the office, he'll guess there's been a mistake. He has a sixth sense about these things, you know. <laughs> now, if he comes in here, he mustn't see it. Yeah, well, how can we prevent it? Well, shove him in the map cupboard. Uh, Sir Gregory doesn't like it in the map cupboard. <laughs> no, you sit, fool. Put the, put the panda in the map cupboard. Uh, oh, uh, couldn't we dress him in that spare hat and overcoat? Sir Gregory might think he's a burly colleague. I say, yes. that's a jolly good idea, too. Dress him up and put him in the map cupboard. That way, you see, we're doubly covered, aren't we? Yes, yes right, but hurry now. Come on, I think I can hear Sir Gregory coming. Yeah, yeah. Come along, Panda. Oh, that bowler hat really suits you. <laughs> He's chewed a bit more off my trousers. <laughs> come on, get him into the map cupboard, too. In, uh, in you go. There, there he goes. Ah. Ah, well, thank heavens for that. Oh, I say, but look at the mess in here. Look at it. Oh, they let it burn. Oh, Sir Gregory, yes. You want to see us, sir? Funny smell in this office. Like some sort of wine. Ah, uh, no, sir. No, no, that's my aftershave. Yes, yes, I bought a bottle this morning, sir. I felt like one. You smell like one. <laughs> <laughs> and what's all this broken wood on the floor, eh, Lamb? Uh, they sent us new furniture, sir. Furniture? This tatty old plywood? Uh, yes, we didn't like it either. That's why we broke it up. Uh, what's that? It, it sounds like something in the map cupboard. Oh, no, Sir Gregory. It's just a few mice, sir, that's all. 
Well, quite a lot of mice. <laughs> Nonsense, man. There's something or someone in that cupboard. Now, let me see. Good grief. Who the devil's this? Ah, well, uh, yes. Have, uh, have you met the new welfare officer yet, sir? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> well, this is he, sir. What? Yes. Yes, he's inspecting our, our map cupboard, you see. Yes. We complained it was too cold in there. That's why he's wearing his hat and coat. He's Lord Stilton's nephew, you know. Oh, why, why, of course, I'm delighted to meet you. Yes, there's a family resemblance, isn't there? <laughs> oh, indeed, yes, I do agree. <laughs> Well, would you, Adam and Eve, it? What happened next? It shoved its claw down Sir Gregory's jacket and tore the buttons off his waistcoat. Nasty. Well, it could have been worse. Luckily, Sir Gregory thought he'd torn them on the door handle and he went off to get them sewn on. Forgive my asking, sir, but why's the panda in the map cupboard wearing a bowler hat and an overcoat? Uh, yes, it isn't easy to explain, Mildred. We expected a young man, you see, to help you through your troubles with Bernard. Yes. Oh! Don't worry about that anymore, sir. Bernard and me are together again. Oh, well, that's yeah. good news. He read in the paper about that weather woman. Seems she's married and eats biscuits in bed. So last night he come round to my place for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> that's your problem solved, Mildred. I wish we could sort out our... Yes, you saw how the panda behaved when you let him out for a moment. Yeah, like blooming King Kong. Exactly. Except he's not a gorilla. He's a kind of bear, you know. Why not ask for help from the welfare officer? I mean, that's his job, isn't it? Getting rid of pandas from offices. Yes, but we don't leave here in case he gets out again. Oh, all right. Look, you say, I'll go and see the welfare officer. I suppose he's in the old welfare office on the first floor. Hello? Yes, welfare officer speaking. Oh, well, yes, I'll, I'll try and help. But uh, there's something I must deal with first. Yes, it's been on my desk since yesterday. This chap, Lennox Brown's, worried about his secretary. It seems her boyfriend's acting strangely. Yes, I'll come up as soon as I've seen her. Bye. Come. Excuse me, are you the new welfare officer? That's right. I'm Mr. Lennox Brown's secretary. Ah, yes, of course. Do sit down. Uh, you have a problem with uh, that fellow. Oh, you know about it. I had a message from Mr. Lennox Brown. I understand he's acting strangely. Oh, I'll say. He threw bits of cake round the office and chewed up Mr. Lamb's trousers. <laughs> Good gracious. Then he bit Mr. Lennox Brown's leg. Oh, nasty. Did he put anything on it? No, I think he liked it as it was. <laughs> he sounds greatly disturbed. He shoved Mr. Lamb in the waste paper basket. <laughs> Did something rather rude. Miss Murphy, I'm afraid your boyfriend is clearly paranoid. My boyfriend? What's he got to do with it? I'm talking about the panda in the office. Oh, the panda in the office. <laughs> the panda in the office? Yeah, have you got claw fears? But it must be Coco, the panda from China. What on earth is he doing in your office? <laughs> That's what he said, sir. He's a Chinese panda called Coco, and he's due at the London Zoo. He's escaped. Escaped? Well, he, uh, misbehaved himself in the map cupboard, so Mr. Lamb took him to the washroom. Who <laughs> oh, uh, is right. He shot Mr. Lamb in a cubicle and got away out of the window. Blimey, you are in trouble. That panda's worth a fortune, and he's only here on loan. <laughs> And now the rest of the news. The search continues for Coco, the Chinese giant panda, which escaped en route to the London Zoo. Police who are combing the city have already detained four stout ladies in black and white fur coats. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a zoo spokesman has said that staff standing by for the panda's arrival were bitterly disappointed. He said they felt like mugs waiting for Coco. <laughs> China has protested to the British government about the panda's disappearance. The Chinese ambassador described it as a disgrace and an outrage. <laughs> so they found the panda in Devon. How on earth did he get down there? Well, on the back of a lorry, it seems. 
fancied the driver not noticing he had a bear behind. <laughs> the police are bringing it back to London tomorrow. In a panda car, I suppose. <laughs> but if it's been found, why have I got to get in the cage? Because today's the day the Chinese television cameras are coming to the zoo. Now, they must see two pandas here. Lucky we found this panda costume in the club's pantomime basket. Yes, but... Yes, and lucky it fits Mr. Lamb so well. Now, come on, too. Into the cage and don't mess about. Well, all right, don't push. Go on, go on. That's it. That's it. Very well. Look at that. Now, it's only for an hour or so. Oh, dear. The lame panda see me. She's coming over. Well, naturally, too. She's been waiting for a mate for years. Just close your eyes and think of England. Oh, no. <laughs> Pandered to as the men from the ministry were Richard Murdoch and Derek Guider. Also featured were Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley and John Graham. The program was written by Edward Taylor and John Graham and produced by Edward Taylor. <laughs>